Welcome everybody to our talk today on Beyond Canvas Pages. Uh, we're from iHeat. My name is Maeve Daly, as Dave has just introduced. I'm head of the instruction design function in iHeat. And I'm Jero Sullivan. I'm the head of engineering. So you can see here some of the topics we're going to cover today. We'll just tell you a little bit about iHeat and what we do. Um, and then our approach to delivering content on the Canvas platform. We'll outline our development process, um, including how we build a Canvas page of content. And we'll also show you some of the other developments. Um, but most importantly, we're going to demo um, our courses. And you can see uh, some of that content for yourself. So who are IHEED? Well, we're uh, an Irish company founded five years ago by a family doctor. Our expertise is really in the development of interactive online content in the medical arena. So we work with ministries of public health and we partner with universities to de de deliver accredited online um, programs. Our focus is primarily healthcare, as I said, and we do focus on uh, interprofessional learning and helping our healthcare professionals to learn with and from and about each other in, uh, on the Canvas platform. We have over 30,000 students on Canvas and 200,000 uh, course completions to date. Uh, and our courses range from everything to your short one-hour self-directed course with a certificate of completion, um, right up to the two years master's program, which is a blended program accredited by a partnering university. Uh, in terms of Canvas, we've been using Canvas to deliver our content right from the get-go, so um, over the last few years. Uh, we chose it for many reasons. Um, two of those key reasons were its reliability and its openness. Um, in terms of its uptime, its responsiveness, um, the ability for us to onboard our, our students quickly and easily um, has really supported us in our growth. Um, and really the openness, it, it has allowed us to, to use Canvas as our backbone and really extend it to meet our needs and the needs of our learners, incorporating third-party tools, allowing us to access medical libraries, allowing us to incorporate our own custom-built tools um, in integrating um, rich media and interactive video, and also leveraging the data that we can extract from Canvas to uh, build our own reporting dashboards. So before we show you some of, of the courses and content that we have developed, um, I just want to touch on some of the core principles in terms of our instructional strategy for our healthcare professionals. Um, we really, uh, it's really important to us to provide learning experiences that are interesting and challenging for our learners, uh, that are relevant and as real as possible. So critical to this is the incorporating realistic characters, challenging characters, um, relatable characters, complex characters. And we use uh, photography and avatars to present their story as we work through our, our learning content and design. Um, it allows us to involve th thought-provoking patient storylines and uh, realistic situations, as well as uh, presenting an overarching um, model of best practice for our audience, be it the, the family doctor or the, the secondary care nurse. We also value authentic learning and uh, learning that's anchored and situated in complex real world contexts. So we frequently uh, pose clinical dilemmas to our learner, situational judgments. Um, where we acknowledge that uh, you know, life is not black and white and, and, and often the answer is not clean and clear and correct. Um, so we acknowledge this in our design and we ask our learners to make situational judgments based on their own current knowledge and experience and then provide the scaffolding and the uh, resources and additional information to help them upskill in the relevant areas and improve their competencies. 
And then finally, court, another core principle of our, of our strategy and our instructional approaches is, you know, we really value the social aspect of learning and the collaborative learning experiences that uh, are offered by the Canvas platform. So in our blended programs, we offer numerous opportunities for our students to collaborate online and uh, often face to face. Um, and as well within our design of the self-directed content, we incorporate stories and perspectives and interviews from others um, and, and even try to support and trigger discussion and discourse amongst our students on a particular subject area, particularly through some of the custom built games that we have. So I mentioned real problems and, and one of the real problems uh, that we have globally today is diabetes. Um, one of our key clients asked us, uh, tasked us with the, the job of presenting and uh, developing an online training program for their healthcare professionals um, to educate them on um, the new guidelines that they had developed and patient protocols and pathways that they wanted to roll out to a multidisciplinary <laughs> team of healthcare professionals. Um, what we got from our client was, in, a, in essence, a mountain of documents, PDFs with uh, complex diagrams and pages and pages of regulations. So what uh, Ger is now going to demonstrate to you is what we did with that content, how we designed it and presented it to our learners to educate those healthcare professionals on those guidelines and pathways. Um, I'd like to show you the modifications we've made to Canvas pages. I'm going to start with the Diabetes Pathway homepage here. And the first thing you will see is up at the top here we have this uh, return to last visited page link. Uh, this is a bit of functionality we, uh, we've added to Canvas, which allows returning students to go back to the page that they were last on. Um, but for many of our students, when they get to the home page for the first time, um, a tutorial opens up for them. And this tutorial that we have put together, um, it's actually quite important for our students. Some of them are actually coming to Canvas for the first time, so we're using this illustration, this animation. Um, so the home page, this is the last visited page link I was talking about there. We've added that a little functionality there. It takes you straight back to the page that the student was on last. A lot of students have asked for this functionality. I don't think Canvas can do it, so we've inserted that. And then we have, <coughs> we've modified the home page with a tutorial. So it opens up like this. The first time you access the course, this video will play. And it's a demo for these first time users of Canvas just an orientation on how Canvas works and our own modifications that I'm going to show you, like that we put in a little nav bar and a breadcrumb tool as well. Um, it's a really nice animation, actually, of that really good illustrator we found in Vietnam, of all places. Love the internet. So let's keep going. So what we also have on this page are some cards. I'm just going to re-render it here again. Here. And each one of these cards represents a module within this course. And we decided to actually add an accent color to each of these modules. And that color percolates its way through that module. You'll see it. We're going to have a look at the type 2 diabetes module now. You'll see sp special links will have that, will take on that color. So it's an orientation um, mechanic that we've used to orientate our students. Um, I've talked about that. And at the bottom, we have a complete survey link here. This takes student, once they've completed the, the course, they can complete a survey and then they can actually print a certificate right within Canvas. We've written our own LTI tool that um, you know, does a lookup, make sure they pass some quizzes and then you can actually generate this PDF certificate right then there in Canvas, which is quite cool. So let's go and have a look at type two diabetes in this course which I prepared earlier. So it looks like the other screen. It's like a second level um, bit of navigation, the menu screen. And this is the first time you'll see our progress bar that we've put in here. Um, it actually works across all the pages, gives you an idea of your progress through this course. We developed this ourselves. And it's um, like students would generally be going through this course in linear fashion. And this just orientates them as to how much content they have less left. Uh, and you can actually skip to content by selecting these nodes here. Um, and then you can see the other sections within this module. We're going to have a look at ACMED and we're going to have a look at a content page that we have developed. So let's go in here and have a look at ACMED. Okay, so progress bar moving along nicely. 
and we start with Ackman's story. Yeah, and then we have learning outcomes and the page is made up of these blocks. Uh, and then we have a little audio case study here of Ahmed. Uh, a lot of our students, English is their second language, so that's really helpful for them to hear the audio and read the text underneath. But I want to show you this page here. This is quite cool. So our page is, it's kind of made up of blocks. And as the student scrolls down through the page, it's made up of these kind of static and interactive blocks. So this one here, for example, is a static image on the right, text on the left. And then we get a carousel component here, which is quite nice. And um, we actually originally used um, Canvas had this kind of inbuilt accordion, but we decided to roll our own. Um, and that's what we've done there. And then we have another animation and the flip cards, which I'm quite proud of. They look quite cool. Um, they spin around like that. I think the illustrations look great on the front of these cards. Really cool. Um, and yeah, we put all these blocks together, like almost like Lego, to construct our pages. Um, so there we go. Some more content there. Little alert boxes that we have there. Uh, and everything that you see here is working on a standard Canvas page. So we're not using any iframes or LTI technology. This is this is Canvas with a little bit of JavaScript and CSS. Yeah. yeah, so this is the end of Ahmed's journey. And I've skipped a couple of pages here, obviously. And what I want to talk about here is Ahmed's map. That, so when you open this up, I have it opened up here, we get to see the journey that Ahmed took through this care map. You can zoom in, it's like a tube station here, like that, it's kind of cool. Graphic designer did a great job on that one. Um, but you can see it's a vast map. This is just for type two diabetes through the health system. Um, so we actually use a character story to go through these nodes. And each one of these nodes is a guideline. And then we have another character that might visit another part of this care map. That's how we we um, we present the learning here. We have these special links. That, that is that accent color I was talking about. And when you select this, a little window opens up here. Uh, it's actually displayed on top of Canvas. And this is the guidelines that every student needs to learn, student slash doctor slash nurse, whatever in the healthcare system has to learn these um, these guidelines. These are the nodes that you saw on the map. This is just one node. Uh, and this content that we're looking at right now actually isn't in Canvas. It's a separate app that we're injecting in to Canvas. And the reason we've done that is because the students can access that content, that guideline information outside of Canvas in, um, in their workplace. So at the end of, no, that's you, Maeve, I've gone too far. At the end of the module, we unlock access to this Pathways app that I'm going to show you now um, that you can use on your mobile device or on your, um, your, your laptop or whatever that um, is like a just-in-time tool. So here it is. It's running separately from Canvas, and it's a web app. I'm going to go into Type 2 Diabetes, and this is the same map again, but it's interactive, so you can kind of zoom in. And okay, so I can look up information about that and move your way around. So this is kind of bringing all the the, uh, the the learning together in one app that they can access later on for this kind of just-in-time access, which is kind of cool. And we have a really neat um, search engine here. So if I search for, I don't know, medication, um, we get to see all the nodes, all the, the guidelines that contain that keyword. And we can go and drill in here. And there, that's the same content that you saw on Canvas presented in a different app um, that we've done there. Um, and all the content, you see everything that you've seen there so far. I want to bring up this slide to show you. It works really well on the student app, which is great. I'm going to show you a screenshot. Let's go full screen. Um, so you can see that it looks really cool. This is obviously three screenshots. Um, and it's in the student app. Uh, each block collapses responsibly and intelligently filling the screen. Um, and all these flip cards work with animations. All the quizzes and interactions, they work really, really, really great with swipes and touch commands. It's, um, it's really nice. Um, and yeah, I'll hand you over to Maeve to learn a bit more about how we put all this stuff together. Cool. Thank you, Ger.
Okay, so as you can imagine, to present uh, the information like that requires a lot of different di disciplines and a, a collaborative effort across the team to, to design and develop these layers. So we obviously have our project management with the schedules and the timeline and the budget, and then our instructional designer who really uh, partners with the SMEs, the subject matter experts, faculty staff, to really understand the area, the need, the characters that need to be incorporated, um, understand the key failure points, and really design the instructional strategy um, in terms of, of how the content should be sequenced and scoped. Um, but also we involve uh, creative design and engineering pretty quickly. And this is a good example of how you can see the need uh, to present this content and how engineering and design have been part of that, um, that, that result and the solution. So the engineering allowing us to access the guidelines through the content and presenting that interactive map and design presenting that beautiful um, visual for people to navigate and access information quickly and easily. We also have our medical editor to make sure we're keeping on track and accurate and our client liaison to make sure we're meeting our client needs. And all of this is really a hub of activity in terms of meetings and discussions and brainstorming and, and ideas. Um, and, uh, but let me talk you through in a kind of a linear process which is, is kind of easier to understand. So we have from the very beginning a business case obviously and a curriculum document which defines the need as such. Um, from that, the instruction designers will work with the SME, as I mentioned, linking out with different team members to create an outline design concept document. And that's really the blueprint of, of the, the design of the, of the course. Um, it, put, it covers the scope, the sequence, defines the learning outcomes, the durations, uh, identifies the characters, as I mentioned, and how it will, it will flow, what interactivities we will incorporate, or what other instructional strategies, such as storytelling and case-based learning, we might incorporate. From there, we go on to storyboarding. And storyboarding is where, when we've signed off our design, we start to really create the content. And we use the PowerPoint slide to mock up the layout of, of the actual screen content, incorporating our static content, so our text, our images, infographics, incorporating more interactive components, like some that you've seen there, like flip cards and uh, accordions and carousels, and then posing questions and other interactivities as needed in terms of achieving our learning goals. This PowerPoint uh, template is really key in terms of developing the content in Canvas because each slide map is, maps to a block on the page um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But once we have our template signed off, engineering can get on with building that content on the Canvas page. We have a QA signed off and then we put it live so that our students can access it. So let's talk again about the page in terms of how we view a page. So the Canvas page for us is made up of a series of blocks. Those blocks, each block is a slide in our template, and the blocks consist of static components where you've got your text, you've got an infographic or another visual, you've got interactive components like we mentioned, all of these that we've made in-house, so our carousels, accordions, and those types of tab text components. And then we incorporate inline questions, so formative quizzes that we pepper through the content to engage the learner, to promote recall, as well as application of learning. Um, and then, sorry, and then we move along, building the content and the sequence and flow of the content across a number of pages, and finally finishing with uh, a summary, which is our learning outcome, our lear key learning points block. And then we can move back onto the Canvas platform and, and leverage some of that functionality in terms of like an assessment to assess that they've um, achieved the learning outcomes for that content. An important part of, of this structure as well to acknowledge here, which Ger also mentioned in his demo, is the ability for the learner to scroll down through the content, to scroll down through the page and scroll back up if they want to refresh or review information, very much as we do ourselves today on our, on our tablets and our smartphones and uh, instead of what would be the more traditional kind of click next experience on, a, on an e-learning. So Jura is going to talk a bit more now about those blocks and those templates that he's created, uh, he and his team have created for us to enable us to present this engaging learning experience. Cheers. So what can we see here? Uh, these are all our templates. Um, so we have all these blocks and we have these predetermined image sizes for whatever way we're kind of displaying these blocks, whether it's a text, an image, 
we have different variants of even a text and image, um, as I briefly mentioned before. Uh, and all these, so the graphic, the graphic designers and instructional designers can actually develop content for these predetermined templates uh, without any kind of involvement with engineering or anything else like that. Graphic designers know if a content block needs a, um, a text and image, they develop to that dimension. Um, and the blocks have already been tested and coded uh, before any new content is poured. So we develop it once, test it a lot, and then we pour the content into, the, content into those blocks. Uh, and each block type um, has different layouts. You can see that one there, that's like a really big image below a chunk of text. We make sure it works on retina screens, all that kind of other stuff. We make sure the image size that we put in there works quite well on that. Um, and uh, yeah, each block is composable with other types of blocks. So, um, and each block uses a mixture of Canvas code and styles, uh, uh, Canvas code and their styles and our JavaScript uh, and CSS that we inject into these pages via our uh, account themes. So in summary, the benefits of doing it this way, this kind of Lego brick way, but it works very well on mobile, as you've seen. We can even demo later on for you if you want to have a look at that. It's bandwidth friendly because we load a lot of content in rather than a user hitting one block, hitting next, another block loading in, we load in a lot of content at one time. And fits great on mobile screens. Each block collapses really nicely. And there's a one-to-one -one PowerPoint slide to block ratio that we can, uh, that really streamlines development. And they're all reusable. So now you understand a little bit more about how we construct a page, oh, sorry, one sec. How we construct a page in Canvas. I want to uh, bring you back into Canvas and just give you a glimpse of, of a little more content that we have developed. So this is an example of our, our uh, course we developed for primary care, educating primary care providers on how to support uh, people with cancer as they're being treated for cancer. and and past treatment. Um, you can see here again, we have our course page with different cards aligning to the different modules that we're gonna cover within the course. <coughs> here you see one of the pages where again, we are incorporating um, infographics, text, and different components <coughs> to present the content. Um, what's important here is another example of how we are supporting our learner through incorporating reading blocks. Um, so one of the key needs here for this audience was to um, have them to educate them on the, on the journeys that people go through in their cancer treatments and provide resources to them that they should access in their practice as well as provide to their patients to help in their understanding of their cancer journeys. So we can incorporate those reading materials directly into the content as they work through it. Again, you see another character, realistic character. Here we're presenting, as we alluded to earlier on, in terms of our character stories, but we're using nice, engaging visuals to present that information to, to our medical audience. And we have our carousel component, who um, here is presenting the story of this character. Um, so here we have our, our character story. We're presenting uh, their, you know, their lifestyle and some of the issues that might be part of their lifestyle choices. Um, and then we asked them to kind of assess the risk for this, uh, this character in terms of uh, developing cancer. So this is an example of an inline question. Here it's really just to engage the learner. It's, it's nothing too complex or heavy, but we use them all the time. Um, and there's a nice color coding system in terms of uh, getting uh, feedback as well as, uh, so you can see here, we can provide feedback, we can link to additional content as you saw um, with Jura's demo. And, uh, and then we scaffold in the relevant um, supporting information around uh, the risks, incorporating links to source. We also have another example here I want to show you of how we've incorporated into professional learning. So here we are incorporating an interview with a key oncologist um, in terms of their dis multidisciplinary decision around someone, whether they needed to get chemotherapy after their treatment or not. Um, and we also incorporate another element um, such as the additional reading, supplementary reading that they can link through and uh, reflective activities that allows them view perspectives from other learners um, directly within the content. And then finally, Jura is going to show you how we allow the learners to link directly to um, the medical libraries within our content also. So yeah, I just wanted to talk quickly about this. Um, we actually work with Science Direct, New England Journal of Medicine and the British National Formulary. 
and we provide our students with uh, deep link access. So they're on a page, they click on a link, and they go directly to an article behind a paywall. It's really cool. The student doesn't even know that they're being signed on in the background. Um, it's really nice. Uh, and then we have, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I can load it up right now. Um, searchable bibliography. Many of our courses have this bibliography screen with loads, like sometimes hundreds of bibliography references, and we have this little inline search capability, which is really nice as well. That loads on the client, there's no database or anything else behind it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, for this one here, we have English Arabic translations real time. So it actually, when you toggle between English and Arabic, the images go from uh, left to right or right to left, um, which is really cool. I have to see that actually working um, live. I'll hopefully get a chance to open up that later on. And we're working on some really cool stuff at the moment, which is like we have this really cool discovery based learning game that works within LTI, so we can plug it into Canvas. It's like an interactive comic book. If we had more time, I'd like to show you that. Don't think I can, though. And then there is, we're really interested in third-party e-learning authoring tools, like um, Structure, sorry, Articulate Rise, and Storyline, I don't know if you heard of those tools. We're working out ways to try and get that content that we author in those systems into Canvas. And we've had some really, um, we've had some good success with that. Uh, and that's it, cool. Right. During the project, did the business case change at all? And if you were going to do the project again, what would you do differently? The diabetes pathway. So the diabetes the pathway, yeah. So it's, uh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, certainly the, the, the did change in the sense that as we explored um, the best way to present that learning and the guidelines um, with engineering and design, it became apparent that that was a, a really useful tool for the audience. Um, so it went back. We went back to the client and presented that. We we essentially recommended this approach, and and the adjustment was made. And it meant that uh, more of the budget went to the engineering aspect and less to the online content. So we adapted accordingly. In terms of what we might do differently, um, Jer, do you want to take that one? <laughs> yeah, maybe like she, well, just from a technical point of view, not use yeah. Google Maps for that kind of zooming in and out map. I would have used a different technology, even rolled our own or use, um, there's an open maps uh, framework. I can't remember what it's called now, but possibly use that instead. Um, but generally fairly happy with the outcome. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you for showing us all of that. It was really cool. Um, the things that you mentioned, like the flip cards that you said was uh, made in Canvas with CSS and JavaScript. Um, those sort of additions, are they like open source? Is that stuff that you are sharing or is that? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that was really it's, cool. yeah it's, it's a good question. Absolutely. Um, well, specifically on the flip cards, mm. um, that's actually using some open source, an open source library to get that flipping animation working. So okay. we're, we, we are using open source uh, uh, technology to actually achieve that. Uh -huh. So was I lying when I said that's our flip card? Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody's, adapted. yeah, 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 <laughs> adapted, yeah, adapted somewhat. Um, and then with our Pathways app, uh, I'm not sure about that. We're in discussions at the moment whether we're going to open source that or not. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a question in regard to product development. I'm interested to know, and I can see that a lot of work has been put into your into your uh, each each one of those pages. What's the size of your team uh, um, in terms of development and how long are your programs? And if you can, how long does it take you to develop uh, each program when you put them together? Thank you. So I, I'll take the how long question because I think that's a really challenging one to, to give a definite answer to, as you know, in terms of um, you know, all the different variables and inputs that, that can be involved in creating something like this. But what I can say in terms of, as a, as a general guideline, um, to put together what would be, say, one of those pathways that you saw there would take probably between 10 and 12 weeks. 60% um, of that is really instruction design time, right? So really focusing on the design. And for us, it's really important to get the design right before we start storyboarding. Um, so we do put time in at the beginning to really understand the need and design appropriately, um, and then the storyboarding. And then 40% then goes into sort of building, testing, and uh, uh, and the timelines too are, are affected by you know uh, incorporating external parties like our SMEs and faculty, which can take time to review the content. But it's it's really critical for us to have them involved and make sure that everything is is what it should be. Oh, I was just going to oh, say just quickly for the team, there's um, about two software developers, front end engineers who develop those components that you've seen. There's uh, 
two, two and a half graphic designers, um, depending on where the project is, at what state. Um, we have Farshore uh, engineers who are pouring the content into HTML, into the pages that you see based on our templates. And it's about, at any time, it's about three or four of those guys running. Um, and, and then we have project and, managers. Yeah. Yeah. How many? How many we have three project managers. Three project managers, yeah. ID, yeah. instructors. And then our ID pool uh, varies depending on the, on the requirement. So they're really critical to a project and, and we, we expand and, and hire on contract as needed for the size of the project. Okay, thank you. I can see you had a lot of people working on the development side. Did you get any help from the Canvas team to design, to modify? You did a lot of personalization. So my question is, did you get any help from the team from Canvas? Um, later on, yes, when we wanted to push the platform more. But everything that you've seen in the demo today was pretty much done on our own and just reading the documentation that was there for Canvas. Um, and once you have access to pushing your own JavaScript and CSS, the world opens up in terms of what you can do on the page with HTML and that combination. So we've just done that ourselves, you know. Uh, but now that we want to push more and more, especially I think in Structure have their own UI framework, we want to know if we can use that in developing the pages uh, because they have some nice components in there. But it's Ruby on Re sorry, it's um, it's React JavaScript and it's hard to get it in there. So that's what we're we're talking to uh, in Structure about right now. Yeah, thank you. Great. Well. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Welcome. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Thank you.